Hey everyone, are you nervous about getting on the dance floor because you're worried about being off time? Well, in this video, we're gonna go over three simple tips that you can do right here, right now, to improve your musicality and dancing with a partner and to any type of music. Yeah. If after watching this video, you're still struggling with how to dance together and you wanna follow a proven system that has helped hundreds of couples learn how to dance in a short amount of time, make sure you stay to the end of this video so that you learn how to apply to work directly with Clara and Joel in our program. And if you enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to get notified when we post a new video. Now let's get ourselves started with our three tips. Tip number one is to identify the beat in the music. That's right. A lot of times people can enjoy listening to music, but they don't know what they're listening for, especially when they have to dance to it. Yeah, it can get a little confusing because there are so many different instruments as well as the lyrics, the singer, all these things going on. But we really need to hone in to sort of the lower register where the percussion usually gives you a hint as to what the tempo of the song is. Exactly. The tip is to make sure that you hear the boom chick. Let's see what that looks like with a bunch of different types of music. So what is this boom chick that we're talking about? Exactly, what the heck is that? <laughs> the boom chick is the sound that the drums make, yeah? So if you tune into the music, mm -hmm. you can often hear the lower register drums. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show you with my trusty sticks from high school. She was a drummer. <laughs> In the concert band. Believe it or not. <laughs> in a concert band though. <laughs> so you can imagine me behind the drum set. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a big bass drum at the bottom. And it's and really that's, big and round. Yeah. <laughs> and that's activated by the foot pedal. Yeah. You can see Clara's foot kind of stamping our, our pretend pedal. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And then there's a snare drum here that's kind of right at your waist level. And that's the one that you're going to hit on the second beat. Mm -hmm. So the bass drum is on the first beat. The snare is on the second beat. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're saying when we say boom chick. Yeah. And those sounds can be quite obvious when you're listening to music for a lot of pieces of music. Yeah. So if we listen to this music, we hear some lyrics happening. We hear a lot of other little sounds of instruments. But we should also hear that there's this boom chick. And Claire's gonna pretend to be dan uh, dancing, pretend to be playing her <laughs> drum set. Only do one at a time, with, Joel. <laughs> with, this, with this song. So you're starting to understand the idea of drums and giving the boom chick sound, but not all music has a strong drum beat. Yeah, some so softer songs like this one has what we call our boom snap. Yeah, so if you can kind of hear that they're doing a finger snap instead of hitting a snare drum. Yeah? And the boom isn't that strong with the music, but you need to infer that there is going to be a boom. Snap, boom, snap. Boom. Yeah, snap. like I said before, on the bass, that's the one. And then the snap is on the two. So often with acoustic songs, it's hard to hear any kind of beat because there's no percussion. <laughs> exactly. So for instance, in this song that we're playing for you, it's basically just a singer and a guitar. Well, here we've got a ukulele. Not quite a guitar, but it's the only thing we've got at home. <laughs> exactly. And so instead of a boom, a boom snap or a boom chick, um, we've got now a strum snap. Yeah. So when we're hearing this, it's so there's a strum and a snap, or a slap of the guitar. Yeah, which gives the percussive feel anyway, but you really have to tune into it, because all you've got is a guitar and a singer in songs, in often in acoustic songs like this. Why did you argue? of this so there's some music out there that starts out soft and you can't even hear the beat. Exactly, like this one that we're playing right now for you guys. Hmm, I don't hear any boom slaps, no snaps, no drums. This is kind of challenging. Yeah. yeah. Ah. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> and so what we say is that beginning part was an introduction. And during the introduction, um, if you can't hear the music, don't force yourself to start dancing 
to the music at exactly. that same time. If you can't quite hear it, then chances are you will dance off time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so give it some time, yep. let the intro play, and wait for the beat to come. Exactly, and now it's very clear, yeah? It's got more of an electronic beat to it, not really a true drum, but it has that boom, snap, boom, snap, boom, snap, boom, yeah. Boom, clap, boom, clap. <laughs> exactly. Tip number two for you guys has to do with strict tempo. That's right. Most of the songs that you're gonna be dancing to out there are consistent the whole way through. The speed or the tempo is gonna stay the same from start to finish. Exactly, and understanding that really makes it more easy for you to dance with a partner because if one person is thinking it goes faster and slower and faster and slower, and the other person thinks it's the same speed or going in the opposite direction, it becomes so much more difficult <laughs> to dance. That a lot of problems, for <laughs> Exactly, sure. exactly. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to do a little exercise for you guys, and you guys can do this at home, to help calibrate your own speed or your own tempo with your understanding of the music, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna clap four beats for Clara. And then what Clara is going to do is try to match the tempo or the speed that I did. So here we go. Oh, she was really good, wasn't she? High five. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> she was a drummer, if you yeah, remember. I mean, after all, <laughs> I better be good. <laughs> all right, let's try this again, but then Clara is going to do the first clap and I'm going to do the echo. All right. <laughs> a little slow there, Joel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was purposeful, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Second try. Let's try this again. All right. I'm going to do a different tempo, though. Okay. Just giving you a heads up. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that time it was a little inconsistent. <laughs> so I think you sped up a little. That's true, yeah. And that happens so much, especially for us leads. We start getting ourselves going in the groove and then we're thinking about either we're getting more confident, we're like, yeah, I got this, or we start leading our partner into different underarm turns or spins or dips. And because of that excitement, we speed up. Yeah. That's right. But it's a much easier for us follows to follow or respond to what you're doing if you keep it at the same pace the whole time, because then it's more predictable. Exactly. Let's try this one more time. I think I got this. All right. All right, good Ooh, job, Joel. I get a high five as well. <laughs> yeah. You can do this with a partner. You can do this mm, by yourself in a way, but you kind of echo yourself. Either way, we want to be really consistent. Yeah. You can do this also tapping your partner, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> or whatever it may be. But we want to understand from the beginning to the middle to the end of the song, it's the same speed. Yeah, the great thing about clapping, you can hear, so you get that um, auditory feedback as well. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're doing it on each other, that you get that sort of touch feeling as well. So that really helps to get it in there. Before we go into tip number three of this video, we want to hear from you guys, which music or pieces of music are you struggling with to find the beat? Write it in the comments below and we'll see if we can help you out. Tip number three is anticipate the beat. Exactly. A lot of times people struggle staying with the music while they're dancing because they react to the beat instead of anticipate the beat. And so what we're going to do is a simple game that you can do again at home. If you got a ball or something that you can drop and that's not gonna break. <laughs> um, and be able to then hone your skills about anticipating the beat so that you are on time. Yeah? That's right. We've got this nice little uh, red massage ball. It's a little flat, so <laughs> hopefully it'll bounce back. But anyways. <laughs> yep. And what I'm we'll going try. to do is I'm going to count four beats. I'm going to count one, two, three, four. And Clara's job or her goal is to be able to get that ball to hit the ground on beat number one. All right. Let's see how this is going to go. One, two, three, four, one. Ooh, Ooh, hey, not, not bad. bad. Good job, good job. So obviously professional here. <laughs> now, Claire's gonna demonstrate what usually happens that people have when they struggle dancing to the music. One, two, three, four, one. Ooh, yeah, it was, if you can see, it was a little bit late hitting the ground. 
And why was that? Because, because I was listening for the one and then dropping the ball. Exactly. And yeah. I did indeed drop the ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 in the comments. <laughs> Bad joke. <laughs> so what we want you guys to do when you are now trying to be more musical is you need to find out, of course, where is the beat? So that was tip number one. What is the speed of the music? Tip number two. And now we have to organize our bodies so that we land on the booms or the chicks or whatever we're doing with our rhythms. Yeah. And so we're going to do this again. And Clara has to try to figure out again, how long does it take for that ball to hit the ground? Yeah. One, two, three, four, one. Yeah. Mm. Good job. Good job. Good job. <laughs> so basically I was thinking because of the pace of the music that after four, I needed to release the ball in order for the ball to hit the floor exactly on one. Yeah, yeah. and she did just that and it was great. If we now show how that translates to now movement or what we would do in dancing, we're gonna take a simple step where Joel is gonna be going forwards and Clara is gonna go backwards. We're going to try to again count that same pace and see if we can get our first step to be on time. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, one. Yeah, good job again. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> and so of course here we're dancing on time for that first beat. Yeah. But if we demonstrate what sometimes beginners do when they struggle with the music, one, two, three, four, one. Oh, and we're already <laughs> late. Yeah. We'll be basically stepping on maybe step two or beat two. Exactly. So one of the things we want you guys to understand, just like when you're dropping the ball at home, is that you need to anticipate when that one beat happens by starting your body in motion slightly ahead. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, one. Yeah. And there, hopefully if you go in a slow motion, you could maybe see Joel and Clara's <laughs> bodies moving. Yeah. And then we hit that. Just one like beat. I was releasing a little after four, he was initiating his body movement a little after four so that he would target the foot to land on the one. Exactly. It's the same sort of analogy that we use a lot for people who do sports, whether you're playing baseball, you're playing tennis, playing cricket, badminton, anything where you're hitting a ball or a shuttle or whatever it may be, you have to time your swing before the ball actually gets to where you want to hit it. Yeah. Imagine if I'm now a baseball player and you pitch the ball to me and I wait for the ball to come through and then I start swinging, <laughs> of course I'm going to miss the ball. Yep. And then you're going to be off time. Exactly. I need to see the speed of the ball. I need to get myself ready, start swinging at the appropriate time and then bam, I can hit the ball with the bat. And that's the same thing we're trying to do now, not with a ball, <laughs> but with the music and the beats that you're becoming a lot more confident. With. That's right. Get your body moving before you need to land with the foot on the right beat. Do you struggle with dancing with a partner and are stressed out at the thought of dancing in front of other people? And you want to build lifelong dance skills that boosts your confidence, whether you're dancing at your wedding or any other social setting in the future? Well, we can help you. We've helped hundreds of couples go from nervous and scared to feeling confident and natural on the dance floor. There is a link in the description below where you can book a free consultation call with Clara and Joel. We can find out if we're a good match for you guys. Also in the description below, we've opened up a free masterclass and we invite all of you to join in. Exactly. You're going to learn our three step system that's proven to help hundreds of new couples get more confident on the dance floor. The link is down below as well. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Thanks again for, your watch, for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Bye.